Hey friends, this is Waylon, and I'm very excited to have yet another wonderful human being to share with all of you, and uh, her new book, her name is Maria Rodale, many of you will know her last name, from a sort of eco-publishing uh, empire of magazines and books and uh, the Institute, the farms, here she is. I love your glasses. Yeah. <laughs> got glasses myself last week. Thank you. You must be um, getting to be, yeah, getting to be middle aged like I me. I still have a pair. Theoretically, I still have 20 20 vision according to the glasses place, but I have pretty bad vision close and pretty bad far away. So yeah. it makes a world of difference. I turned 48. I think at 47, I didn't notice any of this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It happens <laughs> to the best of us if we're lucky enough to make it. So, uh, Maria, tell me a, a little right. bit, uh, if you would, about just sort of what you care most about, what your life is devoted to, and how your new book, I don't know if you have it with you, but uh, you could show it off. Yay! So what's your new book about, and how does it fit <laughs> in with your incredibly inspiring life's path? Yeah. Thank you. Well, my book is called Love, Nature, Magic. It is know, backwards, it looks backwards, but it's, in um, camera. they're short, um, very clear words that I, we can, we can uh, reverse in our <laughs> minds. And it, it combines like the three things that I've been most interested about my whole life. Like I've been kind of obsessed with the idea of love and the concept of love since I was a kid. And, um, you know, nature in all its forms, wild gardening, um, you know, mm -hmm. Oceanic, everything has also been my passion. And um, when I sold our, our publishing company about five years ago, I finally had some freedom to explore um, what I really wanted to do, um, not what you know. Yeah, I was born to do through a family business, um, and that's when the magic started happening. I had been doing um, shamanic journeying on my own for about ten years. And um, I was out gardening one day and really annoyed, totally annoyed by this one weed, right. mud, mugwort. Like, yeah. mm, I wanted to like kill it. <laughs> like to the point where I was almost right. ready to use Roundup, which like Roundup is crazy. Is, we actually and, just um, did an interview with a glyphosate girl, if you know her, about Roundup and how, no. you know, she's an activist around Roundup and is via Monsanto, not a great product, not a great company, a lot of adverse effects for human beings, let alone nature and magic and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, you know, my last book was, well, one of my recent, my second to last book was Organic Manifesto. So I've always been, you know, very- So you know, you organic. must have been irritated um, by mud work to so, think about Roundup. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I decided to do a shamanic journey to see if I could talk to this plant and find out like why it was so annoying. And that opened up a whole universe of like a whole new world for me. And um, I came to understand not only through that journey, but through like in a journey, you start having a conversation with a, a nature being. And then the magic that happened after that led me to understand that Mugwort is actually one of the most sacred plants there is on the planet. And yeah. I was like, blessed yeah. to have it. In my, Isn't that funny? I think a garden. lot of us in this uh, eco movement, we were chatting a little bit beforehand. You know, even, I mean, I'll speak personally, you're a real gardener, so I'm sure you figured it out earlier than me. But a lot of what we call weeds, you know, I mean, I've been blessed to know Brigitte mm -hmm. Mars and some others here who are like, stop poisoning all this stuff. You can literally make salad out of it, or you can make, er you know, remedies out of it or tea or that's right yeah yeah no it's it's um you know i learned so much through these conversations that i had you know not just with plants but you know with insects and you know like the mosquito and um deer and and um you know really rearranged my thinking and it mm -hmm. and it softened my heart you know i became like a hundred percent less annoyed <laughs> And more, yeah. Love so in the Buddhist nature. tradition, which I grew up in, we we call it drala, um, which is the sort of power or energy in nature, and we're part of it, obviously, but maybe not obviously. We don't think of ourselves mm -hmm. as part of it, and we can connect with that and live in this present moment 
that isn't just sort of, you know, the cliche about Zen, but it's a very powerful, delightful place. So what, w what did this shamanic mm -hmm. journey look like for you? Journey uh, in, in general. Hello, you. That's me. That's on my end. I have all these very healthy uh, <laughs> limits set on my social media use, especially being in the job I'm in, but they <laughs> arise in inconvenient times. Um, just, yeah, around, around the bug war, if you would. So, well, um, you know, I don't know how much people know, um, you know, know about what shamanic journey is, but it's an indigenous um, <clears throat> tradition practice practiced by every indigenous culture around the world, you know, from, you know, South American, North American, European, um, Russian, Asian. Yeah. So it's, it belongs to everybody. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's something that anybody can do and it belongs to everybody. And, and um, it's basically like meditating to, um, to the sound of the drum, you know, the, the drum beat mm -hmm. is essential without, a drum or a rattle, you're not journeying. Um, you don't need to do drugs or anything like that. And, um, you know, I just do it in my house. So, you know, I, I was out gardening with mugwort and, and um, you know, yeah. stabbing it with my weeding knife. <laughs> and, it, and I could feel it like kind of going like, hey, yeah. you know. And oh. even your stabbing it with the knife was <laughs> like a step of trying not to use the poison, right? Right, right. Um, and uh, so when I went into the journey with mugwort, it, um, you know, it was like brief, but, you know, she just, she was like, you know, why are you always trying to kill me? You know, have you like ever just thought about asking me nicely? You know, and like mm. plants rule the world. You're never going to get rid of us. And, you know, I realized, you know, in that moment, oh my God, that's, She's so right, you know, like, you know, we need plants more than they need us. <laughs> and if we were to disappear, you know, the plants would just rebound dramatically. Um, so it's like changing the, my whole, it changed my whole perspective of, um, you know, I had, you know, I grew up with a very, um, you know, European vision of what a garden should look like, you know, a colonial, yeah. if you will, vision of what a garden should yeah. look like. And um, that's kicked off a whole journey into kind of finding and loving wildness. I love that. In my, um, in my and, second book, I write about how a lot of gardening, I write about other, many other subjects, but one little chapter is about how so much gardening, which begins in a kind of nice place, you're inspired to get your hands dirty and spend time in your yard or nature so much of it has become toxic and kind of violent and yeah co colonialization you know as you kind of alluded to and and uh, it doesn't have to be that way it can be gorgeous you can work with nature you can still sort of shape and prune and you know but maybe tell us more about that so what does it look like yeah. now your your vision of gardening or your garden uh well um, it's right. winter right now. As but that's know. part of it, right? You're working for the seasons. <laughs> I mean, and the thing is, you don't, you don't have to like radically change your, yeah. your garden, you know, you just have to mm -hmm. like relax really. And, you know, and it's not just for gardeners. Like, you know, I did a chapter on, um, grass and lawns, you know, which right. almost every American has, you know, unless you live in the city and, um, what, grass wants us to know and that you know so I think that you know my my goal once I started writing this book was to help everyone eat, whether you're a gardener or not you know um understand how nature wants us to live in balance with it you know and that's where healing will happen and it starts with us in our hearts and changing our perspective and then like and letting nature be a little bit more wild and um cared for the way, you know, like in a relationship, the way nature wants to be cared for, right. not like we think it should be cared for, but the way it mm. wants to be cared for. And uh, then, then 
And like mm. the earth heals. I love that. Magically. So you start by almost listening or paying attention or being with your yard instead of kind of going in with your inner blueprints, your preconceptions and kind of chopping it up and whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. Um, so Thanks. how has it been? You, you mentioned, um, so, you know, I don't know if folks know, but Rodale was this sort of um, green empire in publishing and, and, you know, you published some books that weren't directly related or magazines that weren't directly related and books, I guess, um, to the environment. But how does it feel, you know, you're working with Chelsea Green, which I'm delighted by with this new book, one of my favorite eco, -pub probably my favorite eco publisher by far. Yeah. Um, everyone should check out They're Chelsea amazing. Green yeah. um, and all their authors. Um, but what is the public? I mean, the publishing world in a lot of ways is is these are the people who are informing us and inspiring us or misinforming us, you know, or depressing us. I'm sure yeah. you have some mixed feelings, right? Leaving that world, obviously, for your life, it's been a it sounds like a blessing to let go. Yeah. Well. Uh, it was a long, interesting journey in itself, you know, because first of all, again, you know, again, I was born into a family business. My grandfather started Organic Gardening Magazine in 1942. My, then he launched Prevention Magazine in 1950. Right. So we were health right. and the environment. And, um, you know, and then we published, you know, Men's Health Magazine in 99 countries around the world and um, Women's Health Magazine. In runner's world bicycling um and you know not to mention all the books you know the encyclopedia of organic gardening which you know um you know i've heard people refer to it as like the oh, google the you know before there was google that. there was the encyclopedia my of grandpa my grandpa um, Bernie you know al gore Pennsylvania, actually and he where the rodale institute is mm -hmm. i believe and um he was organic gardening in the mm -hmm. I think the eighties, maybe the seventies. So I'm sure he knew your, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> um, but what, you know, what I saw over the years, you know, it didn't quite sit well with me um, because I also was seeing all, we had a, a, you know, library, a research library. So I was seeing all the health data, all the science studies and, um, and, but I was also seeing all the reader, um, data, especially once we started having um, websites, you could see the analytics of like, what were people clicking on and what did they really want? And um, so there was one aspect, which was, you know, the nature and in the environment, which I thought was, you know, it was my favorite part. Like, I love that. But people weren't mm -hmm. buying those products. <laughs> people um, and advertisers didn't want to advertise in those products because they weren't worthy, you know, and they didn't want Although to you're in be seen as not worthy. Truth, which and you published was a bestseller, not. right? Right. So books are easier because they right. don't take advertising. And, right. you know, people bought that because of Al Gore, you know, they wanted to hear what Al Gore had to say. So, um, and then on the health side, you know, in your, I'm sure you're familiar with this yep. older, you know, the health fads of, you know, the change every year yeah. there's a new fad and you know um um but what i learned from being in that um in that world was that yeah. those that doesn't really make you healthy <laughs> and it definitely doesn't make you happy and um but people like it because there's still this pressure to be you know yeah. thin fit yeah. young blah 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 and that's a cultural thing fun. that's not People a health love thing. getting into fads um, and hate don't hate uh but are reluctant to invest in actual health and actual you know meditation or exercise or whatever it is but atkins right. diet you know whatever it is of the year that's fun and <laughs> people get into it yeah yeah and you know at the same time yeah. i love to read obituaries in my local paper and I noticed that like all the people who lived to like a hundred were just like normal eat, you know, people going to like bake sales and, you know, the fire halls and like, they weren't eating organic. They weren't, you know, they weren't eating like, um, 
you know, they weren't vegans. Um, but what they did seem to have was like some joyfulness. And, you know, so I was ready when we sold the company to let go of all the expectations I had about what I had to do as CEO of a company, a health company for advertisers, for readers yeah. who wanted to buy diet, you know, to find out how to lose weight. Or, yeah. you know, it's like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care anymore. And, um, you know, what, you know, I, I learned through all these journeys with um, the different aspects of nature was that the most important thing is that we feel love, we feel joy, we have fun and dance and laugh and that we just take care of each other. And, you know, everything, like even how gardeners think about invasive species, it's the same, you can equate it with how people feel about immigrants. You know, it's like, look, we're all just here together in this garden. Let's oh, have, let's have a party. Right before this, <laughs> our conversation, I, I have a couple bird feeders in the back and obviously there's avian flu going on and everyone's worried about that. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, it's a total party in my backyard with all the birds, there's a couple bird feeders and the squirrels are below because <laughs> I have squirrel poop proof bird feeders. So they're happy below. And I actually just threw out some food for the squirrels. Um, it's a total party back there. And anytime I go back there, it goes silent and they all run away and then they come back in two minutes. It's great. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah. you know, we can have this conversation in person, but I do feel like the mindful, for lack of a more encompassing yet meaningful word publishing world is vital and it's kind of dying so i had a certain reverence for an appreciation for rodale and you know it's a battle that i'm happy to fight and you know i lose it 45 percent of the time i feel like if i can win 55 percent of the time you know we have a we have a bar that we need to be above for our partners, our sponsors, our advertisements. They're not perfect products or companies. If we only took perfect products or companies, we'd be a nonprofit with no ads, um, which is fine, but I like to pay people well and, you know, my staff and um, it is, you know, I'm really inspired by this world. I think like you, I, you know, my going back generations, my, my family were all writers and uh, journalists. So, you know, not publishers mm -hmm. like your family, but, um, you know, Ro Rodale is like blue chip or green chip for me. And, and I understand that battle. I laid off 20 people last year and this year has been the best year of my life on some level because I'm not in meetings all the time. I'm every single one of those 20 right. people were amazing. Many of them had been with me for a decade or more. Um, it was a mm -hmm. kind of bloody, awful, sad year, but now my life is like writing and I get to do interviews. I'm doing five this week, you know, with amazing, inspiring people like yourself. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I respect that yeah. you were able to kind of let go and, and then you're still contributing. You're finding your own, if not more, maybe. Right. Yeah. I mean, I mean, thank God we sold the company when we did, which was before the pandemic, because, you know, like mm -hmm. publishing mm -hmm. has been decimated. And, you know, even book publishing, you know, th you know, Chelsea Green is one of the few kind of like really healthy publishers and, um, you know, it's small, small and independent, you know, the rest are like these right. ginormous, big, you know, um, but what's, you know, what, what, you know, one of the things I love history and I love reading about history and one of the things I I realize is like every single time there's a brand new technology introduced, whether it's, you know, the printing press or, um, or, you know, television or cars, you know, like, or the internet, <laughs> you know, there's a radical reshifting of everything. And we're witnessing that we're, you know, we're part of that. So, um, you know, what, one thing that's exciting to me is how Substack is taking off, you know, the idea that people will actually pay, for content, you know, that directly to the writer, not, um, you know, not through any advertising medium. And then, um, you know, I think social media is still like, you know, is having its own crisis right now. And, um, the, you know, the news media, especially, um, uh, but TikTok is like kind of taking the place of a lot of what 
for me anyway, what I used to get from Twitter, which is like real time, oh my God, what's happening in Iran? You know, I want to see right now. Um, so it's constantly changing. And that's what life is, is a constant process. Of yeah, changing. both. I mean, and so. then we have AI, which is going to transform feels like everything. And we have almost no idea how in the next just couple of years, it feels <laughs> like in robotics. Um, but yeah, it's both. I mean, like with nature, it's change. And there's also some sense of like, cherishing and preservation and caring for like my local cafe that's been here like 45 years trident you may know it in boulder they had different owners a couple times they've changed they're in a wonderful place but whenever there's a change i notice in boulder a lot of people say well just change is like you know everything changes it's fine but there's also like historic preservation which i love like i love like you said history mm -hmm. there's some sense of like well change can be healthy or unhealthy you could have poured roundup and that would have been changed or you could have hacked it with a you know your weeding tool or you could make friends with it and <laughs> listen to the mud board, like in your book so there is wholesome change and i think that's something like you were saying with those who live a long time you know about the blue zones like people who mm -hmm. kind of treat their lives and their communities with harmony tend to do really well yeah well i think blues zones are a separate thing because blue zones are where like the whole environment yeah is conducive well there's like six principles in the blue zones a long life one of which is what you said the community right the kind of cheerfulness the connection yeah right right yeah out here in pennsylvania like we don't have yeah. like nice weather i love pennsylvania <laughs> i grew up visiting we don't have Vermont. healthy food in vermont it's maybe similar i loved it it was so beautiful Whew. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I think, you know, AI, sure, you know, like everything, it's gonna, but you know, the, you know, one thing I noticed through, you know, the last, through my lifetime, I'm 61 years old, is that there's always people, usually men, you know, chasing their, like, billionaire dream. And, um, you know, they want to be king of the world, you know, and so, you know, mm -hmm. crypto you know, NFTs, you know, sometimes it works, you know, like Google and Microsoft, um, but then it doesn't always last. Um, so uh, those things are gonna continue to happen because it's like a kind of human nature, um, but also what won't change is people wanting and longing for real connection and authentic experiences and being in nature and, um, you know, just love. Yeah, I love, love that. Nature you said magic. you were in New York and you were like, <laughs> I love it for three days or something, but then I want to be back on my, <laughs> you know, in, you know, out in my yeah. rural home in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and yet I have a daughter who lives there with two kids, her husband and two kids, and she feels the exact opposite. Right. She loves Pennsylvania for three days and then she wants to be back in New York. So everybody's different. And I think that's the other thing I learned about the health stuff. It's like, you know, for some people, like me and my daughters, gluten doesn't suit us. You know, for other people, you know, it's dairy or, you know, meat, you know, every single, and, you know, part of the mystery of life is finding our own path and, and what's right for us, yeah. each one of us individually. And so, you know, that's why sometimes the, having lots, lots of choices and options and information is good because each person is responding um, to what they yeah I mean, the diversity need. of the human species and our cultures are you know is wonderful i think during the pandemic we saw the downside of everyone sort of having their own truth which is we also have to like be able to work together yeah. around some basic values like let's care for our elderly and vulnerable you know whether or not you enjoy masks right. i don't think anyone <laughs> well not many people at least really loved them but you know yeah, there's some basic mm -hmm. principles like you know i don't want to harm some elderly person or vulnerable person you know yeah i i mean this might be too i don't know i had an insight though and like because like we always have to look at what mm. what is driving people and, and um i was in that early anti-mask 
phase, I saw one guy, you know, he was kind of like a middle-aged blue collar worker. And he was like, you know, I don't see why anybody would want to, you know, wear a mask. It's like smelling your own farts. And I was really like, oh, right. like he probably has bad oral health and it probably does really smell bad to him. And, you know, but that's a bigger issue. And, you know, I, I know in like a lot of states in the South, there's like hardly any right. dental care for, have for a lot of people. Health so, care for um, half of Americans. Yeah. Right. So, so a lot of these things, yeah. you know, really stem from um, yeah. taking care of people's so, basic that's needs. That's a great insight. I think I myself, I think I went like at least 20 years without going to a dentist, you know, because once I was like mm -hmm. out of my mom's house, I didn't have money. I didn't have right. health care. I worked actually in publishing. They limited my hours to 39 yeah. hours so I wouldn't get health care, you know? <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> I had, was lucky to have like, yeah. I think I, for like 10 years, I had 300 to 500 bucks in my account. You know, you're not going to go to the dentist <laughs> at that point. Because they're like, oh, you need to right. do this. You're like, right. oh, I can't. Unless you must. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah. 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 And that's a bigger issue. Yeah, there's you know, some big issues, right. No, that's, that's a true. bigger issue. Yeah. Um, so maybe um, tell us a little bit more about the book before we, before we go. Or would you be willing to read um, well, maybe the little part about the mugwort or something? Whatever you like. Just uh, give us a little bit more of a hit. Well, so let me, I'm not going to read, but let me tell you some of the, um, the list of annoyances that, that I sounds had good. <laughs> that oh. came to happy endings, every single one of them. Um, so, you know, mugwort, multiflora rose, uh, vultures. I have a really interesting relationship with vultures. Um, bats. I love bats actually, yeah. but there's a lot of interesting history. Um, rabbits. There's a hysterical story about a rabbit named Frank in this book that oh. everyone should read. Oh. I laugh about it every day. Um, Lanternfly, which do you, uh, do you have? I don't lantern think so as much. I know it's a real issue on the East Coast, right? I'm sure we will soon. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, but you know, yeah. Don't worry about yeah. them. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Um, lightning bugs, use Osage orange. I did a couple of trees: the Osage orange, tulip tree, um, the aspen tree, which I have in Pennsylvania. Um, the mosquito, which was my most challenging um, chapter, as you could imagine. Um, thistles, deer, wasps, poison ivy, snakes, grass, Ooh. dandelions, weather. This is a great list. Um, I feel like this this is like mites. a Gary Snyder poem or something. <laughs> Mites, ticks, cicadas. The groundhog, like if, if you just read one chapter oh, and like want to laugh hysterically, yeah. read the groundhog. Um, milkweed and wow. um, fungus. So, um, you know, and, and like all, all of these, I sort of did in order of how they um, came to me. And so it's, it's um, you know, and, and you know, the, the bottom line of it all is that, you know, we just, need to learn how to live in harmony and balance with nature. And that starts with us softening our hearts, you know, learning how to connect with each other, um, with everything that's around us and everything, everything mm. is sentient and conscious. So rocks, trees, you know, microbes, you know, yeah. everything. It's like Kant. So. Ma Emmanuel Kant. Uh, yeah. Did you see everything everywhere all at once? Yeah, there's some good scenes with the I did. rocks yeah. in there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I love that. Yeah, no. I mean, and, you know, I mean, the other aspect of, of it for me is it, you know, made a lot of these um, traditional ancient stories, all of a sudden things started making sense, too. And it all kind of fit together. Um, you know, why the spiral is such a ubiquitous um, symbol everywhere in the world. Um, so it was fun. Yay. Well, I can't it was fun. I had a good time reading. <laughs>
Thanks. Oh, and I, I also, I read oh, the nice. audio version, the audio book. So um, that's yeah. fun to listen to. Although what you don't get from the audio book, and it's not anybody's fault, it's just audio books don't include um, uh, like the, the gratitude section at the end and the further resources. Like, so if you want further resources on how to journey or, um, you know, my, gar my gardening places or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think have to buy I'll buy the book, but I love your voice. So I, I'm tempted to maybe do a little <laughs> bit of both. Yeah. Well, Maria, <laughs> I really appreciate your delight and yeah. your uh, guidance for us, your reminders in this book. And I'm excited to go to your are you doing a bunch of readings or just a couple? No, just all over. In Boulder or everywhere? Um, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of different things kind of where anybody, you know, anybody who's asked me, I will try to go. So I'm going to um, uh, Washington, D.C., North Carolina, um, Georgia, um, Boulder, and um, that's what I, ha and New York, cool. you know, that's what I have on deck so far, but I'm open to, you know, kind of doing other yes. things if people So ever and you can follow Maria, just if you click at the top, uh, check yeah. out her brand new book and she may be doing a book reading near you. You could probably also request it somehow through Chelsea <laughs> Green or Maria, um, or even yeah. more effectively, sometimes Definitely. just asking your local book stores to know about the book, feature it, you know, invite you all that yeah 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 i mean i've dedicated this whole year to kind of just spreading the word and getting out in the world you know i've was holed up in my house in my garden right. for the last three years a lot so of us are it's time, time up, to get out sure. <laughs> i've been to like countless <laughs> social occasions you know, over the last year and i feel like at every single one people are still just including myself beginning to sort of recover something yeah it's taken a while right right but hopefully hopefully like not just recover but like heal into well something said. new because there was right some things we the whole conversation about to, the new normal we had a lot of articles on that like we don't want the old normal yeah you know it's sort of yes and not either or a bit <laughs> right yeah. Hopefully we can learn exactly. from it. And, exactly. you know, my overwhelming concern these days is, and there's many, but is climate crisis. So if we can begin to work in harmony with our mm -hmm. earth for future generations, you know, conservatives are talking about caring for children and young people. Liberals are talking about that. You know, everyone of every side should care about the climate well, crisis because that's the existential thing that's going to affect our future generations. And I, I, you know, I have to say, my book is all about that. And what, you know, I, when I was thinking about this book, it's like, I didn't feel like I wanted to write another kind of like right. preachy, here's what you must do, blah, 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 blah. You know, so the, how the, you know, the answers to climate change are really simple. <laughs> they're so simple. But, you know, they're kind of built, built into these stories, right. you know, um, not just from what the nature beings told yeah. me, but from the research I did. I love about, that. Reminds so, me a little of Margaret uh, Rankle, who I'm yeah. sure you know. A wonderful author. I think no, you'll love her. I don't. Yeah. She kind of tells yeah. stories about the climate and other things, but almost never mentions the climate crisis. You know, it's all through local stories yeah. and gardening or whatever it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maria, what yeah. an honor and a pleasure. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, maybe, I'd love to. Maybe I'll, I'll see you in Boulder. For sure. <laughs> I'd love to get coffee. Okay. Time. Thanks. All right. Thank you, everyone. Sure. And thank you Thanks, most everybody. of all to Maria. You can follow her <laughs> and go get her book, Love, Nature, Magic, right? <laughs> yeah. Got it in the right. Yes. Got it in the right order. Nature. Magic. Okay. All right. Thank you <laughs> <Yeah>. so much. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye.